started. First question, Kelly Eco. Hey coach, um, do you now have a, a clear timetable on the return of James Harden? Um, I'm aware that he was uh, getting his test today here in Houston. And uh, so that leads to the fact that he is here. And that's pretty much all I know right now. It's kind of, uh, there's some moving parts to it, I assume, but uh, him getting tested in Houston is good for everybody. Mark Berman. Steven, um, what, what, you've only had a couple workouts, so what will be the challenges once he gets back in here, James, that is, to working him back in and getting him up to speed on everything? Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, he, uh, we're doing things a little bit differently, but he's an elite player, you know, so, uh, elite players have a way of learning fast and fitting in and making everybody else better. Uh, so there will be some sort of learning curve when it comes to, um, how we do things on the floor differently than how he's done it in the past, but. All the great players I've been around, whether it's Steph or Luca or LeBron, uh, they pick that stuff up pretty quickly. Jonathan Fagan. Um, obviously, James won't be able to practice with you guys prior to going to Chicago uh, if he needs to get three straight days of negative tests first. But is there value to having him? Is that an option uh, in the protocols, uh, especially since you're going to be away for three days? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, the protocol book is thick, and I'm not exactly sure, honestly, um, where it fits in and, and when he can join the team and all of that. So um, we're, it's like I said, we're doing this day by day, and uh, just to have him in the building is good. Melissa Rowland. Hey, Coach, after what's happened with James, do you view sort of an erosion of trust as an issue, and how do you move past that? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say an erosion of trust. You know, trust is built day to day, and once the relationship begins, then we'll, we'll begin that process of trust. Obviously, it wasn't a um, great start to it, but, you know, that's the NBA. The, the NBA isn't going to be roses every day and there's going to be issues and there's going to be uh, things that you're going to have to work through as a group. And, and that's what they're going to, that's what we're going to do. The, the good thing that I have here and one of the reasons that I am, I was so excited to get this job is like, we're not a, in a rebuilding situation, you know, ownership and Rafael have done a great job of putting a really good team together, adding John Wall, adding Cousins, adding Wood, and now adding James to that is still very exciting. So as far as the trust is concerned, you know, I need to build the trust with everybody on the on the team. So um, we'll, we'll build that when he gets here. Brian Smith. Stephen, uh, th there was a report today, I know you have nothing to do with this, that um, James is open to being traded to Philadelphia and now other teams as well. Brooklyn had obviously been mentioned. How, how do you how do you handle that? I know you'll, you'll you know this is part of the NBA, but you're you're trying to get this work this guy in, and then there's a whole other world out there where he's apparently he, he wants to play for other teams and doesn't want to play for the Rockets, according to uh, countless national and, and local reports. Yeah, I think the the way that you started that question is the way I'm going to answer it. Like, yeah. I don't have anything to do. I, I don't have anything to do with that. So um, him being here shows a level of commitment to um, what we have going and, and what we have going forward. And, and that's that. Thank you. Ali Khan Bajani. Hello, Steven. Um, I know you've only been with him physically for a few days, but you've mentioned five out to us before and how you want to run the offense, even when playing with Christian Wood. So do you envision Christian Wood as a secondary ball handler and a shooter from the perimeter? And is he more of a four or five? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say he's a secondary ball handler because um, that would indicate he's probably initiating more than he, than he will be. 
But for us, he's going to be a five. I mean, he can play four if we have Cuz on the floor and they can play together. And he's definitely versatile enough to, to do the things that a four does. But his advantage is at the five. You know, if he's playing against a bigger five, he can stretch him out. If he's playing against a quicker five, he can um, take him to the paint and, and roll and catch and finish and that sort of thing. And, and his ability to play off closeouts, if we're playing five out, we get the ball into the paint and we kick it to him. He can make the shot, he can drive it, or he can create another action for another player. So um, definitely looking forward to seeing what that looks like um, against another team coming up soon. But we're taking our time to implement the uh, structure and strategy of, of what it looks like, because as we've talked about in previous sessions, it's all new. It's all new for all of us. Thank you. Christy Regan. Have you um, had any conversations with James since, since he's been back in Houston? I have not. Thank you. Brian Bearfield. Coach, since you've been here um, and now that you have a couple of days of training camp under your belt, what stands out to you about some of these players that you may have just seen, you know, a couple of times, you know, during your coaching career or on film? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, a lot, you know, after our, after our practices, we go in as coaches and kind of talk about it and talk about these guys who we, as you alluded to, seen from afar, but you really don't know a guy until you coach them. So, I mean, you go right down the line, you have John Wall, who I didn't know he had the leadership capabilities that he has as far as talking to guys and getting people organized and putting them in the, getting them in the right direction. Eric Gordon, as far as a player, he's always someone that we had to game plan for and, and think about, but he's so dynamic offensively. I mean, he can shoot, he can drive, he can make plays for others, he can play and pick and roll. And then the defensive end, he is like a lockdown, strong, quick defender. And, and to see that every day is exciting. You think about Christian Wood, who I coached previously in Charlotte, but that was at a time of his career where, you know, people didn't really know if he was even going to be able to stick in the NBA and, and to be an NBA player. And uh, he has shown by leaps and bounds that he's ready for the role that he's going to have, which is going to be an important role for our team. And then because to be – back from his injuries and, um, you know, moving the way that he is and, and leading and making threes and all of those things. It's, uh, it's really, it, it's, it's a cool thing to see guys up close and be able to really get a feel for them as you alluded to in your question. Thank you, coach. We'll take two more, Mark Berman. Stephen, with, with all your years on the bench working, working for your father and working for others and dealing with, with stars across the league, how much has that helped prepare you in some ways for what you're dealing with or whatever happens with James going forward? Yeah, I mean, every, every situation you go through kind of prepares you for this moment, I think, you know, whether it's a star player or a player that's on the fringe trying to make it, you know, there there's issues kind of with, every level of, of player. So um, spending time with my dad and, and how he dealt with players and then Don Nelson and how he dealt with players and Rick Carlisle and Steve Clifford, like I really learned from the best. So they've all prepared me for this moment. And um, I think just making sure that I'm being patient and, and taking it day by day and understanding that this is a long process and it's not just um, these few days of training camp that are cause for anything for, for anybody to go haywire. It's we're, we're going to make sure that we're doing this in a good manner. We're doing it in a smart way and uh, we're doing it for the long game, which is success in the playoffs. And last question, Kim Davis. Hey, Coach, you, you mentioned some of the players and, and what you've seen and, and how you guys talk about them, but is there anybody that has surprised you with some of the younger guys that maybe you really hadn't even seen before? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I hadn't seen Broderick Thomas play before. I mean, he's a Division II kid and has come in and really done a good job. He listens well. He closes out every time. He makes the right decision. Um, he's, a, he's a good player. And uh, for a Division II kid to come in here and be able to do, do what he's done so far, we're intrigued by him. We're, we're excited. Um, Mason Jones has been very good. A kid from Arkansas, and you know, it's just a different game for for those guys who have uh, come from college to the NBA, and and they're just trying to learn. And we're doing a good job of watching individual film with those guys. But I would say the one guy who stands out the most that people don't really know of or, or doesn't get the notoriety is Jayshon Tate, who uh, played overseas in Australia. And it has really, really been a pleasant surprise. I mean, he's, he has good size. He can play multiple positions on both ends of the floor. And um, he's, a, he's an exciting player that I think everybody will enjoy watching, the play, watching play. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate right. your time. Yep.